Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! In an exclusive television interview, the singer Lily Allen has told Newsnight she feels victim-shamed by the Metropolitan Police. On Sunday, she told The Observer that she felt let down and dismissed as a nuisance by police over her repeated reports of a persistent abusive stalker. Alex Gray has a history of psychiatric problems and was known to the police. He was finally convicted this month, eight years after he first threatened her. It was only when he broke into her house, then stole her bag, that police called and charged him with burglary and harassment. The charges didn't, to her dismay, include stalking. In response to Alan's comments, a senior officer at the Met emailed her warning that her interview could deter others from going to the police at all. Lily Allen spoke to Kirsty earlier today about her support for a national register of serial stalkers. First, we asked about that terrifying ordeal, which first began with some abusive tweets. The interview contains strong language. I'm lying in bed and I can see the door handle um, moving and you know then he steams in and starts screaming and shouting where's my dad where's my dad what have you done with my dad you fucking bitch um, at which point I just I was in shock um, I didn't know who this person was I was concerned for him because I could see that he was really agitated and upset but it it was very focused on me. It was like, and he was like, very was, close to you. Yeah, and as close as we are. <clears throat> as close as we are. Yeah, and I and I recoiled. I recoiled back into my bed. At which point he ripped the duvet off, and I jumped out of bed at that point and ran around to the other side of the room. And um, he he kept sort of shouting at me, but he was very focused on me. It was really confusing because it was. It was loud and it was aggressive and there was lots of sort of gesticulating going on and he had something under his jumper. You didn't see him as the same person in the photograph necessarily? Not at all. Well, I didn't... The, the photograph, I can't even, like, no. visualise it now. It was something that was but given to me six, you know, five years ago for, uh, you know, 30 seconds to look at. It transpires that on the 9th of October, um, he had sent an email to his mother saying that he was in London, had come into some money, probably from my handbag, um, and that he was determined to murder a celebrity. The police didn't tell me that. And I was living in the same flat on my own, albeit with a security guard. Um, <clears throat> then on the 11th, I think, uh, I was DJing at an event and I came home at about one o'clock in the morning to find the handbag that had been stolen on the bonnet of my car, burnt out, at which point I called the police. And the police came over, and I think that it was the next day um, that they installed CCTV on the outside of my house. And then a day after that, he was arrested. And what happened in court? Um, he uh, was brought up um, from the cells and he came in. He immediately made con eye contact with me. He started um, shouting at me in the court. When the judge said, why should I grant you bail today? He said, because the world would be a better place without her. And that's what I'm here to do. There wasn't anyone from the police at court that morning, so you know, even though I had witnessed this, nobody from the police had witnessed this and was writing it down in order to, you know, notify the CPS that he was continually threatening me. There was a charge of burglary and a charge of harassment. But um, no stalking charge? No stalking charge, yeah. but they didn't really seem like they were really interested in, in making it a stalking case.
after I gave evidence, um, I was taken into a room and I was told by the CPS that um, in his interview, he said that he was going to put a knife through my face. And in that interview, which part of which was played in court, what did the police then say to him? We're going to end the interview there. Until this happened to you, Lily, had you any idea um, of the extent of the problem with stalking? I had no idea about the extent of, um, of stalking that, that goes on in this country. And as far as I'm aware, it's 700,000 reported cases, 1% of which end up with a prosecution, um, which is why I've um, teamed up with the Women's Equality Party and Paladin, who are the charity associated mm. with stalking. Um, to uh, you know, lobby for this serial stalking register. There are not many people in this country that have the resources to move house, take on a security guard, um, <clears throat> and 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 a, and a legal team in order to you know push the CPS and and the police. I feel very thankful that I do have those resources, but it makes me very very worried about other women and indeed men in this situation. Due to the high profile of this matter, I fear other victims of similar crimes may have read the story and now may not have the confidence in us to report such matters. As such, it is really important that I can understand what, if anything, went wrong during the investigation. I was saddened to hear of this report, so I would like to hear your views on what we could do better. What do you think of that email? I think it's victim shaming and victim blaming. But you know he's going to be sentenced now and that must brings some relief. Yes, it does bring me some relief if he is um, sentenced and, and dealt with as a, as a mentally ill person because if he's not, I'm not safe and my children aren't safe. I'm not in the slightest bit angry with Alex Gray and um, I could see from the minute that he came into my bedroom that he was ill and that he needed help. I wanted to help him, you know, I felt immediately like um, something's really wrong with this guy and um and i feel like you know he's he's been let down i've been let down and how many other people are being let down lily allen speaking to kirsty well uh, lily allen stalker is due to be sentenced next month and this evening she told kirsty she was in touch with the Independent Police Complaints Commission. Join me now from Manchester as the National Police Chief's Council Lead for Stalking and Harassment, Assistant Chief Constable Gary Schoen of the Greater Manchester Police. And here in the studio with me is Sophie Walker from the Women's Equality Party. She's their London mayoral candidate. You heard uh, they have uh, teamed up with Kirsty Allen on this one. Thank you both very much indeed for joining us. Gary, if I can just start with you, it, it does seem that interview to raise some astonishing issues. There is something uh, slightly weird about a victim saying that she felt she was victim shame. She was made to feel embarrassed uh, by the police calling her out when she complained. How do you make sense of that? Well, it's clear that what uh, Lily Allen endured was, must have been incredibly frightening. Um, and it's not just celebrities who get stalked. Uh, every week, thousands of victims, men and women, across the country uh, are subject to this frightening behaviour, this behaviour that doesn't seem to stop, that steals their lives, that really tears them apart. And, you know, we have to do something, we have to do more about this. We have to, as a police service, as the criminal justice system in this country, listen to people like Lily Allen and learn and move forward. But I think it, hearing Lily Allen's story is really important. We have to be able to say to people across the country that, you know, that is incredibly... Um, you know, a frightening experience, and we need to do more and more every week now to try and ensure that we safeguard victims. She, she felt she'd been told off, didn't she? I mean, when she spoke out and said, I don't think the police came to my rescue on this one, she got an email saying, don't deter other people from coming forward. Was that the right call for the Met to make? I think what we have to do is, is ask victims. I mean, sadly, only one in four victims of stalking ever report their experience to the police. And clearly, you know, people like Lily Allen who don't report put themselves in danger and we can't assist them. 
Do well, you I think the Met say... failed in this specific pa uh, case? Well, listening to Lily Allen, clearly, you know, she feels very let down. I don't know the circumstances of the investigation, but she does feel let down. And I think we have to reach out to victims and say, please believe us. Uh, we will treat stalking very seriously, and we have to encourage more and more people to come forward. Too many people suffer for too long this fixated, obsessive behaviour, and we need to be there and support them. And I would say to all police officers around the country, all police forces around the country, that this is an important story to listen to. Yeah. And, you know, yes, we prosecute more and more people. In the last two years, we've prosec successfully prosecuted 70% more offences of stalking than we've ever done more, before. 70% more offences. But offenses. that comes down to, uh, to Sophie Walker, that comes to 1%. Is that right? 700,000 men and women are stalked, and 1% is prosecuted. convicted? Prosecuted, yes. Prosecuted. So, I mean, I think what's really interesting here is, 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 is hearing Gary say that uh, so few people report, and I think f few women report because they fear exactly this response, that it won't be taken seriously. Um, and I think that... But that, that figure, 700,000, yeah. you're sure? That, I mean, that's like 2,000 well, a day, on, the isn't data it? The data on this is very poor, which is something we really... So it could be really, wrong, that it could be I don't think that it's wrong. I think it, it, think, it, they think it could be much, much worse, actually, because we know that most women only come forward after their 100th incident. Mm. So the scale of the issue here is huge. And what's good about the situation is that we have a stalking law that was introduced in mm. 2012 um, and we have, a, uh, we, we have a, an agreed uh, approach between uh, ACPO and the CPS which was agreed in 2014. That is very basic but very necessary uh, measures such as referring the victim to support services, making sure there's a single point of contact, um, taking a very serious forensic approach from the get-go so you can build a solid case. None of these things happened in Lily's case. Gary Sheeran, it seems odd, doesn't it, that this law was introduced in 2012. The stats speak for themselves, if that's right, 700,000 people stalked. And yet, when the police went round, they were only interested in the burglary in Lily's case and not in the stalking. Why, why is there this, you know, acceptance that it's on the rise and it's huge, but this failure on an individual level to take it seriously? Well, the 700,000 comes from the British Crime Survey, so that's people saying that they've experienced stalking. Not reported to the police, that's their saying to the British Crime Survey they've experienced it. Every year there are thousands of people prosecuted under harassment laws and stalking laws, which are effectively the same statute. Stalking is far more serious and the penalty is more important. What we have to do is get police officers and the Crown Prosecution Service to recognise where there is stalking involved, we must charge with stalking. Far yeah. too many stalkers are charged with harassment And offenses. would you add to that a stalking register, as we would for sex offenders? Do you think it's important, mm. since stalking is now illegal, for there to be a register of people on it? I think there is lots we can do. In 2016, I think we're going to, do, we're going to see a great deal of activity. Okay. Yes, we want to see stalking register. There's going to be new guidance for investigating for police officers. We're having a new app developed so people can actually capture the evidence for the police service on their telephones, which I think is really, really important. And I think also we've just finished consultation with the Home Office on the introduction of a stalking, so, uh, a stalking order which will allow police officers to put controls on perpetrators from the moment it's reported. These are vital tools Sophie in combating and people, keeping people safe. So the Women's Equality Party is doing this uh, work, this campaign with Lily and with Paladin because we talk about it's important that st stalking is recognised but the police are not recognising stalking and that is why part, a really key part of this campaign is to ring fence funding for specialist support groups who can then use that expertise to train the police because what's happening is that they are, this is, these, these it, separate incidents are being mm. recorded rather than seeing the full a pattern. A joined up picture. Um, mm. and, then, and on top of that, it's, um, it's really important that that's understood so that if, when we do, hopefully when we move uh, to a register of serial stalkers, okay. police can recognise that pattern. Thank you both very much. Thanks for joining us. If you have been affected by any of the issues that we've discussed tonight, you can contact Paladin, the National Stalking Advocacy Service. I've been again.